Item number SCP-100 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-100 is to have six guards patrolling the interior of the perimeter's fencing, and two guards dedicated to the monitoring of the interior and exterior of both warehouses and the residential building, with rotations to occur every three hours. Any unauthorized personnel found within SCP-100 are to be detained for questioning, prior to amnestic administration and release. Three guards are to remain within the storefront of SCP-100, with rotations to occur every eight hours. The storefront front entrance is to remain locked at all times, with keys provided to necessary personnel. Private property and no trespassing signs are to be posted on the front of the storefront to deter any drivers from stopping at SCP-100. Any constructs SCP-100-1 creates are to be removed from SCP-100 and melted down to slag, with the exception of SCP-100-2-A and SCP-100-2-B. Should SCP-100-1 become uncooperative, SCP-102-A and 2-B may be removed from SCP-100 until the time that SCP-100-1 becomes cooperative again. The largest of the two warehouses within SCP-100 have been converted into a basic research facility. All objects created by SCP-100-1, excluding SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B, may be used for research purposes. Testing on SCP-100-1 itself may only be conducted with written permission from the acting head researcher. Description: SCP-100 is an abandoned scrapyard 80 km from South Carolina, known as Jamaican Joe's Junkyard Jubilee. The scrapyard covers roughly 5,000 square meters of fenced-off land, consisting of two warehouses, a storefront, and a small residential building, as well as neglected land and land use for storage. SCP-100 holds roughly 1,500 vehicles, both pressed and unpressed, as well as roughly 1,400 kilograms of separate scrap, estimated to be worth $5,000, or 3,870 pounds. SCP-100's anomalous effect manifests through SCP-100-1 and its constructs, including SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B. Autonomy is lost when SCP-100-1 or one of its objects cross the fence perimeter of SCP-100, remaining in this state until reintroduction. SCP-100-1 is an autonomous sapient humanoid construct, consisting mostly of copper piping, uninsulated copper wiring, and aluminum cans. SCP-100-1 lacks the ability for written or verbal communication, however, it possesses the ability to communicate using rudimentary sign language. SCP-100-1 is largely uninterested in conversation outside of sales, and information gathered from it has been limited. SCP-100-1 appears to possess skill and craftsmanship, demonstrating the ability to operate tools such as arc welders, drills, and power saws as well as heavy machinery such as car compressors and forklifts. SCP-100-1 possesses the ability to create autonomous constructs similar to itself, using material available within SCP-100. SCP-100-1 tends to create four specific animals, iguanas, crocodiles, turtles, and flamingos. However, SCP-100-1 has been known to craft other species, such as domestic pets. To maintain compliance, SCP-100-1 has been allowed to keep two objects, labeled SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B. SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B are constructs superficially resembling insects, assumed to be created by SCP-100, as they have occupied SCP-100 since the initial discovery of SCP-100. The names Ramon and Beatrice are welded into the backs of SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B respectively. They appear to operate as both companions as well as guards for SCP-100, as well as guards for SCP-100, 
as they patrol the perimeter of SCP-100, except during intervals of interaction with SCP-100-1. SCP-100-1 appears to follow a ritualistic schedule, repeating the same actions daily. From 0800 to 1500 hours, SCP-100-1 enters the storefront of SCP-100, seating itself behind a counter and attempting to bargain with any humans within the storefront. Occasionally, SCP-100-1 will return to the yard prematurely for reasons unknown. From 1500 hours to 1600 hours, SCP-100-1 interacts with SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B, communicating using vague hand and arm gestures. Interaction tends to consist of grooming, repair, and activities resembling fetch and hide-and-seek. From 1600 to 2000 hours, SCP-100-1 performs various tasks, including taking stock of material within SCP-100, cleaning and maintaining tools and heavy machinery, and cleaning the interiors and exteriors of buildings present within SCP-100. From 2000 hours to midnight, SCP-100-1 performs what is assumed to be leisurely acts, ranging from creating new constructs, interacting with SCP-102-A and SCP-102-B, and patrolling SCP-100. From midnight to 0800 hours, SCP-100-1 enters the residential building where it remains seated at a desk for the duration of this time. In the event that a human enters the storefront of SCP-100 during the interval of time SCP-100-1 is seated behind the counter, SCP-100-1 will attempt to bargain with them, using a variety of gestures to convey meaning. Most attempts by SCP-100-1 are to sell scrap, figures of its own creation, or repair services. However, it has been known to purchase scrap. Despite SCP-100-1's inability to read, it possesses the ability to perform basic mathematics, as demonstrated by sales. Sales made by SCP-100-1 are typically met with some degree of unfairness. SCP-100-1 has been known to intentionally use faulty scales and contaminant scrap piles with cheaper metals and has demonstrated knowledge of the area of effect within SCP-100. As SCP-100-1 has sold constructs repeatedly, despite the loss of autonomy when exiting SCP-100. Efforts to confront SCP-100-1 about this have been met with both distress and indifference, with referral to a sign posted on the wall reading, No Refunds Mon, happening regardless of SCP-100-1's emotional response. SCP-100 was discovered on November 9, 1976 following reports of strange machines operating from within the scrapyard. These rumors were discredited as urban legends, and a Foundation agent was sent to SCP-100 to act as the landowner until containment was performed under the guise of a property sale. A wooden privacy fence was built along the former perimeter of SCP-100, one-way windows were installed in the storefront, and a highway now running through the nearby town of redirects the majority of civilian traffic. Addendum 100-A Records show the property is owned by one Joseph Duval, with the mailing address sharing the same name. Local utility companies report building had stopped approximately three months before the discovery of SCP-100, which was found abandoned save for SCP-100-1, SCP-102-A, SCP-102-B, and several avian and canine figures presumed to be made by SCP-100-1. The initial sweep of the buildings revealed the residential building to be mostly bare, with the only sign of former occupants being a note found taped to the door of the storefront. See Document 100-A. Incident 100-A On June 3, 2005, SCP-100-1 created a humanoid autonomous construct 10 cm in height the first time SCP-100-1 has done so. Significant effort was put into this construct compared to others, with greater detail applied to the construct, including facial features and JJ welded into the back of the construct, and stainless steel making up the majority of the construct. SCP-100-1 placed the construct on the counter of the storefront for the duration of this scheduled interval, both using vague gestures to seemingly communicate with one another. 
Following the confiscation of this construct, SCP-100-1 remained seated within the residential building of SCP-100 for a total of ten days. Document 100-A The following is a copy of the note recovered upon discovery of SCP-100. Out to lunch. Please see assistant. JJ